Buenos dias a todos. How are we this morning? So good to see you. Oh, hi, Monica. I love to see your names. I love to see some of your, I know some of you. This is exciting. Um, well, welcome to our session. Uh, Dina and I are going to present this morning on taking the Lada Lada strategy online. And so um, I do have um, a bit.ly uh, link here and I can stick it in the chat for you all. Um, but all of our handouts from today are going to be in this Google folder that I put in the chat. And Dina, um, Dina and I are going to, we'll try to keep remembering to put it into the chat for you as people come in because they won't be able to see the chat. Um, so remind us if you need it, we'll, we'll keep putting it in there. Um, so we, let's go ahead and get started take advantage of our time. Um, if you're familiar with Lada Lada, you know that it comes from Literacy Squared. And um, this is our book by Literacy from the Start, Literacy Squared in Action. These are the book authors. You just saw Dr. Hopewell give us our keynote and you know, Dr. Escamilla, Dr. Boloski, Dr. Lucinda Sotero Gonzalez is here with us as well in this session. And um, Dr. Sparrow and um, Manuel Escamilla as well. So these are the original authors of the book. And I also wanna point out that um, we wanna give, um, credit to them as well because um, these are the original founders who who helped to bring Lada Lada to life and to um, to make it what it is today. It came originally from a teacher, Estelle Lara, but we have developed it over the years in Literacy Squared. So these are our founders and authors. Um, and today you have Dina and I presenting. I'll, I'll introduce myself and then I'll have Dina take the reins and inter introduce herself as well. Uh, so I'm Jody Slavic. I um, just finished my PhD at CU Boulder in December. And now I'm working full-time with Literacy Squared. I've been working with Literacy Squared since I think 2009. My colleagues here can help me out with that. But um, when they first came to Jeffco and I was working in Jeffco um, as a TOSA and then a teacher and a dual language coach. So been working with Literacy Squared for a long time and now have the the privilege the last six years to be um, working with districts around the country um, implementing these strategies. So that is me in a nutshell, um, and I'll pass it off to Dina. Hi everyone, um, I'm Dina Gumina, and I am not actually working on the Literacy Squared project anymore. I worked with Literacy Squared uh, as a graduate research assistant, but now I've uh, pivoted, I guess, over to the Tilde cohort where I'm directing now, but we um, did a lot of the Lara Lara with the first cohort and we did a study with them. And so that's a strategy that we're also using with Tilde. Um, so, I have been working with Jodi a little bit on thinking through how teachers can work with Lada Lara virtually. Um, so that's why we're collaborating on this today. And I just want to name that my two-year-old is home. Um, so, so hopefully there will be no interruptions, but I can't promise. And, and I also know that many of you are dealing with various interruptions as well. So no problem if you have to take a moment. Yes, and my, my puppy has kennel cough and not at daycare today. So she, hopefully she's young enough to where she's kind of a pain in the butt. So hopefully it's not a problem. But we understand we are gonna have two sh very short breakouts because this is a strategy session. So I'll put that out there ahead of time. We'd love for you to participate, but if, you're just, if you just can't, we understand that as well. And we'll talk about that when we get to that point. So we're gonna go ahead and start with just getting a sense of who you are and why you are here. Um, we know that there's a lot of other sessions going on and especially Sue's working session is happening right now. So we appreciate you choosing us and we're hoping that we can make this session as meaningful for you um, as possible. So if you could take a few minutes to go to menti.com. So Jody has put up here three different ways that you can do that. She'll put it in the chat for you or you can go to menti.com and enter the code, um, or you can scan the QR. You can do it on your phone or on your computer. And if you just take a few minutes to go through those five questions, and then we'll share out um, in about three minutes. And I'll keep putting that in the, in the chat. So you're gonna hear us repeat ourselves because we have, you know how it is starting late and We'll have people coming in not knowing um, what we're doing. So I'll keep putting the link in the chat. So we're going to menti.com, 
you're filling this out and I will put on also the Mentimeter so we can see, we'll start populating some answers here. And you should, um, those of you who have your cameras on, are you able to keep continue going to the next, to several of the different screens? Can you just nod and let me know? It's not just this one, right? Yes, okay, perfect. So you'll have several slides there and Menti that you'll Awesome, keep we have so many districts list. represented. That's great. Oh, wow, it's exciting. You know, it would be cool as if it, um, we tried this, but it didn't work very well. On Menti, you can actually pin them on a map, but it, did, it wasn't working didn't for work. us. So it's not like Adams 14 is down in Southern Colorado there. But. <laughs> right. so we have Jeffco, DPS, Thompson, St. Brain, DPS and Cave, DPS, lots of DPS. All right, DPS, way to, way to represent. Thompson, I love Thompson. Worked with some of you in um, one of the summer classes, St. Brain. All right, well, pretty much our, our local districts, Yay. right? Awesome. And I'll put it in the chat one more time. Hopefully everyone's there now. I know it might've taken a second to get there. All right. Looks like those of you online are done. I'm trying to go to the next slide. I'm going to go. Yeah, we have 22 participants who have answered. Oh, we had a new one come in. See you, Denver. All right, great. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. It'll let me. Okay, and what is your role? So let's see who we have here today. If what you're other, would you mind putting in the chat what that role is so we can have a sense of what you're doing? Um, I'm excited to see so many pre-K and younger elementary teachers. I would be really excited to, to talk with you all about how Lada Lada is going for you or what ideas you have about the younger grades because that's something we've been thinking through um, in the till day cohorts. Ah, SEL, cool. Um, and I forgot to put, um, yeah, the university folks as well. All right, great. So it looks like we have lots of pre-K, K, one, two, couple of third, fourth grade teachers, less in the secondary, which is what we kind of expected. And then coaches and TOSAs, you all are also really important with this strategy intervention. You can do a lot, a lot of in intervention as well. Oh, no worries. That's okay, Sally. You could just let us know in the chat or out loud yeah. while you're here too. All right, great. Well, I'm gonna keep moving on. So that's who we have in the room. Next slide. So your current reality, we have many of you are online virtual only right now. Some are doing some in-person learning and only six all in-person learning. You can definitely do this. Obviously, the strategy is created for you to do it face to face. Um, this is kind of what we were expecting. Great. All right. And then I'm going to go to the next slide. So familiarity with literacy squares, a lot, a lot of strategy. Awesome, it's great that uh, we have some familiarity. We're not, we're not gonna be spending a ton of time in this session really going through the strategy. So um, if you're not familiar, we encourage you to reach out with us for questions or, or refer to the text. We'll be giving a brief overview, but the focus of today's session is more looking at how you might modify the strategy for virtual context. So mm -hmm. if, you, if you have questions about the strategy, for sure, put them in the chat, but we won't be spending a ton of time going through the strategy specifically. Okay, great. So only, um, uh, we are gonna actually do it um, together. So if you have never done it, at least you'll get that feeling of, of what this looks like if you haven't. So it looks like we only have half of you who have actually tried it face-to-face -face, um, and very few of you virtually. Okay, and then this piece right here, this is our all of our, <laughs> vein of existence right now, trying to get students to talk online, super difficult. And I would say, you know, I've been teaching graduate students and undergraduate students online as well, and it's hard to get them to talk too. So I think this is a ECE to adult learners problem with the virtual context. So we're gonna be talking through some strategies for that today. All right, and then finally, let me go to this one. Why did you choose to attend this session? Uh, 
either people didn't write anything or let me refresh. It's the one thing about Menti, it's a little, and of course my computer is super slow with Zoom. <laughs> patience, patience. Oh, and it's resolving post, great. as with all things online. Okay, well, who knows? I don't know what's happening. I don't know why there isn't anything or if it didn't let you or could be something. Do you mind if you um, have an idea of why you attended shows this, or you chose to attend the session, just posting it in the chat so we can make sure that we're uh, catering to what you're hoping to get for out of this session. That would be very helpful for us. All right, great. Well, thank you for that. I'm going to pull this back out, go back to my presentation if I can find it. There we go. All right. All right, go ahead, Dina. Great. So um, first, just a brief overview of what is La Talara. Um, and La Talara is one of the main biliteracy strategies in the Literacy Squared framework. So it's really intended to work on comprehension, reading fluency, but most specifically oracy. And, and we know that oracy is something that we struggle with, particularly in virtual learning. So um, we're gonna be trying to really hit that oracy piece today. So um, it's a whole group strategy that's typically done within one week of a unit. So if your unit is you know, six weeks long, um, you would still take one week of that unit. But if it was four weeks long, as our example here, you would do it in Spanish for about a week and in English for about a week. So we recommend, because we know this takes 20 to 30 or 45 minutes of your literacy block, that you do, do it in alternating weeks so that you're not doing it multiple weeks in a row. Um, we do also recommend that you do it in both languages. So if you're really thinking through a biliteracy uh, framework and teaching for biliteracy, you wanna make sure you're doing this strategy in both languages, but not just a translated version, right? So it's gonna be a separate activity, a separate text, um, but you wanna make sure that you're doing it in English and Spanish. So here on our calendar, we can see that it occurs three times during a week and typically takes about 20 to 40 minutes each of those days. Um, we, depending on the text and the grade level, we've had many teachers do it where they will read the whole text um, on a fourth day. So there's like the, the first day that's not actually the first day with the instruction if you use a modified text. So um, that's something we often do in, in the middle to upper grades where in order to have that real, um, you know, complex text understanding and fluency practice, you want to use a longer text, but you're not going to read the whole text because um, that wouldn't fit within our 40 minute stay. So you'll use a modified text. And I'm happy to talk with you about that later um, if you have questions about how that might look. And you'll probably hear us say this more than once, but typically that we always say at least three times a week, but with virtual, we're finding that teachers need to extend the lesson plan. It's just not yes. too much to do with too little time with your kids online. Especially if you just have, um, you know, I know a lot of teachers who are doing virtual, virtual instruction only have like an hour where they're face-to-face -face yeah. with their children online. So you're not going to use 40 minutes three times a week for this activity if you only have an hour, right? So, so we'll be thinking through how that could look where you could do it asynchronous. Um, so it could be students are practicing that uh, asynchronous repeated reading while you're not face to face with them. And we'll talk about that. Um, so you'll read the same text three times each week. Uh, I mean, total of 10 times. So three times each day where you're doing a echo choral and partner read. Um, and then you'll be doing explicit oracy and comprehension instruction after those repeated readings. So that's a key piece. It's not just the repeated readings. It's really thinking through how we're gonna do oracy and comprehension activities that help students develop language and access the text. So this is an example of an English la da lara in one week. You would read it in English. You would introduce the text as the teacher, introduce the key vocabulary. The teacher reads through the entire text just like a modeled reading as you would if you were doing a read aloud, right? So talking through, what are you noticing? What are comprehension things? And then you move into the repeated reading strategy that you would do the rest of the week. So there's the echo read where the teacher reads and the students echo, the choral read where everyone reads together. And then there's partner read so you can choose your partner strategic grouping, however you would wanna do partners and we trust teachers to make those decisions that work for them. Um, and 
And again, this might look different in the virtual context and we'll talk about that. And then on the second and third days, you would not do that introduced text and the general read through the text. You would just do the echo, choral and partner and then the oracy instruction. So during the oracy, it will evolve across the weeks. You're not doing the same oracy activities every day. We want students to be developing more complex language and accessing the text in more complex ways. And oftentimes this is in relation to a writing strategy or writing goal that you're working towards in the unit. So thinking through what language student need, students need to know for that writing objective, but also to access the text and just talk to each other about it. And just to um, acknowledge a question in the chat about um, English and Spanish, we suggest this, this strategy was created for bilingual settings to do in English and Spanish. But if you have an English only, you can definitely do this strategy only in English. That works. So just a quick note about ORC. So ORC is different than oral language, right? And so we talk a lot about oral language and getting our students to talk to each other. But when we're talking about oracy, we're really thinking through the oral language in connection to the literacy and the content objectives. So thinking through oral language as the subset, or oracy as a subset of oral language that is necessary for students to meet an academic and content objective. And of course, this is super important for our language learners and our bilingual learners, right? Because they need to um, have that explicit instruction. And this is a great opportunity to think through how you can develop that metalinguistic awareness in comparison to, uh, you know, comparing Spanish and English and think through how students talk to each other in the different languages. And so we want to think about oracy in connection to our content and our language objectives and how students are going to orally demonstrate what they know in relation to the text. So ORC has three main components. Um, first, we think through vocabulary. So we really, this is all in connection to the text that you use um, for the Lada Lara and the unit more broadly speaking. So you often wanna choose a Lada Lara text that works within your unit and supports you in developing those objectives across the unit. Um, but thinking through how you might choose key vocabulary that's refining and expanding students' knowledge of words and concepts in relation to the text and in relation to the objectives in the unit. We also encourage the use of high utility words. So we often see vocabulary instruction focusing on things that are you know, more really super content academic specific language. And actually the words that our students who are emergent bilinguals really need are those words that they use all the time. So thinking through things, and we'll look at some examples today, but things like suffixes and prefixes and those sorts of things that can be applied more broadly will be really helpful for them. So we also want to think of the language structure. So what language do students need to express their ideas more accurately and in more complex ways? So we want to think through these language structures beyond just sort of close paragraphs and fill in the blanks and think through how are students expanding their language. So we often see language structures such as like first blank, then blank, next, then, you know, and we want to think through how can students really make their language more complex and what sorts of language structures will they need to do that. So that might be if you're sharing opinions, you, you know, we see these often in addition to and moving beyond, in my opinion, blank, right? And saying more why and justifying language. Um, and I would say um, teachers are really great at this, right? It's teachers are great at thinking through sentence stems. Um, and this is a strength we're seeing, this, particularly with our bilingual teachers. They really know how to use sentence stems in strategic ways. And so the next piece that we really want to think through is dialogue. So Sorry. how do students oh, yeah. move? Sorry. How do students move from just completing these language structures using the vocabulary and using those sentence stems? How do we move them into dialogue? And that's the piece that gets a little bit more challenging is how do we get children to talk to each other in increasingly complex ways? with more nuance and more connection to the text and showing that complexity and their understanding. So it's our job as teachers to strategically plan um, for questions and dialogue that elicit meaningful conversations. So really supporting students in building on each other's responses and talking to each other. 
And we want that to be a real authentic dialogue where students are both asking and answering questions. So this is um, not my uh, image, but thinking through, Jody, I don't know who had this idea originally, but thinking through um, vocabulary as the bricks, language structure as the mortar that kind of puts those bricks together. And then the dialogue is what really brings the whole thing together to build a house, right? And how students are talking about text and relating to each other in complex ways that demonstrates comprehension. So here's just, just a super brief example of um, a more primary level of oracy. So I don't know if you've used the Alma text, but we have it here in both languages. This obviously would be an English version, um, but the story is Alma has a really long name um, and she doesn't love her name because she feels like it's too long. And so she talks to her dad about it and he goes through the story telling her that all of these names mean really important things. So a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of wonderful projects that teachers do about the stories of their children's names. So that would be a great opportunity to use this text and engage in a lot of letter um, using this text. And so we think of something like, what is your full name? And that's not a phrase that students might know, right? Full name. What does that mean? That's one of those weird English terms that really has a strange meaning. Full means a lot of different things. So it's important to have that explicit discussion. Why would we say full name? What does that mean? And then we see here, um, my full name is. So that's a practice of pronouns. Jody, do you mind clicking down? So, Sorry. Yep. So here we can see that the vocabulary is the phrase full name, but also we have the vocabulary of families, right? So we have uncles, aunts, great aunts, which is a phrase that students may not know. Uh, great uncle, grandpa, grandma. Um, and then we have the opportunity to think through grandmother. Is that different than grandma? Why do some people use the other? And then thinking about pronouns, this would be a great opportunity to um, talk to your students about pronouns and think through what sort of gender pronouns are used, what sort of um, pronouns do those ch children use with themselves, with their family members. Here we see my, his, and her, but maybe somebody is not using those gender binary pronouns, so you, that would be an opportunity to have those discussions with your students. We also have um, the possessives here as another focus for language. So thinking through in English, we use apostrophe S. How do we show possessives in Spanish and having those explicit discussions? So in just this dialogue, there's a lot of language that can be learned and it can be learned through um, in connection to this beautiful book that we really love. And we'd obviously focus this for our students, you know, we want to just throw it all out there and have them do all of these at once. We'd focus them, we'd use whatever they need to ground them in, in the context of this, and then also give them multiple opportunities to practice. So they're not just saying A, partner A, partner B, and we're done. We're doing collaborative structures and whatnot to get them to practice several times this language, um, which we won't go over today because we have a million things to, to cover with you, but um, just know that that is the, the hope for this or a C. Oops, there we go. So moving forward for our focus today, we're really thinking through taking the strategy into virtual settings. So I'm sure that you all are more experts than we are in teaching online, but we know that routine can help a lot with students adapting to this context. So Lada Lara is actually a great routine and because it's used in the exact same way in both Spanish and English, you don't have to reteach the routine when you're reintroducing the new content, right? So it kind of lessens that cognitive load and, and depending on your students' language abilities and, and language preferences, it might be worth, you know, first doing the strategy in Spanish and then thinking through how you would do it in English the next time. So routine helps us to be more efficient and it helps students to feel safe and successful in this particularly challenging time. Sorry. Trying to chat in the, try it in the chat and do this. So there's three questions we want you to consider while we're looking through this presentation today. So how will you get your students to engage in repeated readings, which is the first aspect of the strategy? And then how will we get our students to engage in oracy about the text? And then what might need to happen to restructure the strategy while still maintaining its integrity? So that's kind of a key piece. We want to think through, yes, we know virtual learning is very different and I I think it, we need to recognize that things are going to change and evolve and we can't hold the same expectations that we would in a person in face-to-face -face context. 
However, we want to make sure that the strategy is still useful and purposeful or else we're wasting our time doing it, right? So thinking through how, if you need to restructure it, how can we maintain those repeated reading and ORSE aspects? And with that said, uh, we will give you specific time at the end to um, where we're just talking about your ideas and how you how you might do it in your classroom. But but if while we're talking today, an idea comes to mind or, oh, I've used this app or I've used that, please, please, please put it into the chat. This is a strategy session. People are here because they want strategies for their classroom. So um, please share with the rest of the group. So we're going to go through a, a couple different ideas for scaffolding repeated readings. Um, there's the opportunity to do whole group, small group, and both synchronous and asynchronous readings. Um, in whole group, we recommend that if students are engaging in echo and choral readings that they mute themselves because it can be a little bit hectic on Zoom um, or on, you know, a lot of the different platforms if you have all your students kind of reading, even when you're in the classroom, if you've tried the strategy, it's a little bit hectic while they're all reading. So, so we recommend muting. Um, echo read, we think that you students can practice repeated readings asynchronously, listening to the teachers. And we'll go through a couple different examples. We found that Flipgrid is a really great strategy for this. So um, Screencastify, Seesaw, and Flipgrid are all great options for um, students practicing without your direct guidance, right? Um, also, Jody has found that using a puppet or a costume or some sort of online person to differentiate between the teacher um, and the students while the doing the echo read has been really helpful. And particularly since COVID, many children's books authors have put their themselves reading their books online. So that is a great opportunity to use those online resources. That way you don't have to record it yourself and you can just post that and your students can listen to that and echo it with you. And then partner reads, um, breakout rooms are a great way to do this. And if you have older students and you wanna increase accountability, um, your students can record themselves in breakout rooms. If they have that ability, then you could kind of watch them and see how they're doing. Um, if you're in a hybrid context, it would be really nice to have a student on their computer meeting with someone face to face and they could be partners. Um, Flipgrid also is a great opportunity for students to record in response to a partner. Um, and we also just want to reiterate that this may not happen as if it was in person. It might not happen all three days. You might have to do one that, where the students record themselves, one where you all do it together, and one that's the hybrid. It, it will look different depending on your context and depending on your time frame. And obviously, if you're hybrid um, and have kids face-to-face -face and online, having all your kids still logged in um, is necessary in order to have to pair your face to face student with your virtual student. So everyone's logged in, um, but you still have your face to face students there, if that makes sense. And we're going to go through an example. So, yes, don't worry. So, ideas for ORC practice. Um, breakout rooms are obviously kind of ideal, right? When you can send your students to a breakout room and it's almost as if they're in a small group in your classroom, which is how you would do ORC if you were in face-to-face. -face. Again, a virtual student paired with a face-to-face -face student is also a great COVID safe option. Um, when you're unable to do breakout rooms or if you're in a small group, you can kind of go to those traditional teaching strategies of the round robin, calling sticks, um, and then there's like the wheel of names if you have one of those, or there's also, you know, random number generators and things on the internet that you can try out to just kind of call students um, who may be meeting whole group virtually. And then we'll look at this option, but students who record a question and then partners will message back. Flipgrid we find works the best for this because um, they can record videos back to each other and then the teacher can look at them. Um, so that doesn't really give as much of an opportunity for the authentic dialogue, but we are ensuring that students are engaging in those language structures, which um, is better than nothing, right? So um, this is another option where you can use repeated readings or sentences to warm up for ORC, or if your students are at the grade level that they could type in the chat, um, that would be also another option 
we know that that may not be the case and it might be more time consuming than it's worth depending on your students and the age level. Um, we've also seen that Google Docs or Padlet um, all work for kind of increasing this accountability. And when you're moving into that typed um, level, that's probably later in the week, right? We're not going to expect, depending on the language structure, we're not going to expect students on day one necessarily to have some extensively typed um, ORC activity. And it doesn't have to be typing either. You could like this example here would actually, it's pictures and kids would drag them into a quadrant. So it can be dragging. Um, I see someone in the chat mentioned Pear Deck. So you can do some different activities on Pear Deck where they're responding. Um, so just a way to keep them accountable since you don't have your, your thumb on them as you normally would when you're face to face. Okay, anything else, Dina, you wanted to cover? No, I don't think so. Um, I'm gonna just look through the the chat real quick to see if there's any questions, okay. but I think I, um, I think people are just giving ideas, um, which thank you. Keep putting ideas. This is kind of how this is going to work. We, we gave you a few ideas. We're actually going to do it and get you to feel how Lada Lada feels um, in the virtual space so you can start to brainstorm um, your own context and how it might work. And then after we do one example, um, we're going to show you several more examples with Flipgrid and Seesaw and whatnot. Um, so keep putting those ideas in there, but do know that we're going to um, return to that in a little bit. And I'm going to put the bit.ly just in our chat one more time in case you came late. Um, all of the resources are there. So if you're looking for our presentation or anything like that, it's right there. Great. So in that bit.ly, um, and I'll, if, if I'm actually going to put the uh, um, link to inside of the bit.ly is a document for this poem that we're going to do together, but this is the link that goes directly to the document. Um, so you can get, you can get it, you can get this um, either through the bit.ly or through this um, link that I just put in the chat. We're going to try this. I think it's important um, if you've never done La La La, it's important to feel it, see what it's like. But also if you've done this several times, um, we don't often have an opportunity as teachers to feel what it's like to actually do it. And you've probably never done it in the virtual context. So we're putting ourselves in kind of learner's shoes to get a feel for it. So you can kind of feel how the comprehension and fluency um, works on the online setting and then for you to get some ideas for yourself as well. So we're going to be reading this um, text for the Lada Lada called The Library Card. It's in this book of poems called My Name is Jorge by Jane Medina. It's a classic. I'm sure many of you have it in your classrooms. Um, and it's this, the poems are in English and Spanish. So you could do this also in Spanish. Today we're going to do it in English. Okay, so I'm going to move us through here. Maybe. All right, so again, like Dina said, what we would do on day one is we would do a teacher read. And then what are the next three? What are the repeated readings? You can just mouth them to me, say them out loud to yourself. They are, I see your mouths moving, echo, coral, and partner. Okay. And so we do echo, coral, and partner. And then what do we always do after repeated readings in Lada Lada? Or C, I I love, okay, I know that you all are doing a million things. If you're able to un -cam, um, to, to put your cameras on, that would be helpful for this strategy. You don't have to though. I know that you're dealing with things at home. So just so you know, for this piece, be helpful. Um, so we do or C. What we are going to do is we're going our adjustments for today. We're going to do the echo and choral read all over. We're going to do it together, but you're going to mute yourselves. You're obviously muted already. Um, and then I'm going to use the use of a recording to signal when students should listen and read. So with that echo, like I read, you read, I read, you read, it gets confusing, I think, online sometimes for kids to know when they're supposed to read. So that's why Dina said, like, I, for the little kids, I have a puppet. Like, it's, it's like the puppet and then me and then the puppet and then me, right? And so kids kind of, it helps them to say, oh, I'm supposed to read with the puppet. Um, in this case, this is a fourth grade. Um, we're focusing for fourth grade. Um, I'm going to just mute someone here. There we go. Um, so we are, I'm using a recording. You could use something that's on Epic or that you find online, like on YouTube, like Dina said, there's a million authors reading right now. I am actually going to use a recording of Dr. Manuel Escamilla. He read this for me and recorded his voice. 
Um, and then we're going to use breakout rooms for Oracy and Partner Read. Oops. Okay. So this is Dr. Scamia. He's our he's our guest reader today. And um, just for those of you who are really trying to figure out how to do this, I had Manuel auto record himself using voice memo. And um, it, Dr. Scamia is in his 70s and he could do this no problem. So if he can do it, you can do it too. So audio record it using vo voice memo. Um, I just wrote this poem out on a Google Doc. And then you'll see this little book right here is a cursor. And I don't know if you've ever used an extension, but Google Chrome has um, extensions and you can change your cursor. So like for the little kids, I have a Disney hand that points. Um, this is a book that's gonna kind of do our tracking for us. Um, so that's a Google extension called Custom Cursor. Um, and then tracking with audio using Screencastify. So then I played it and then I did the um, tracking using Screencastify. So whew, all those things, this is all in your handout so you can go back to it. So first of all, teacher read. We're just gonna listen to Dr. Escamilla. So I want you to listen to the text and listen uh, for meaning about what this poem, the library card is all about. The library card from My Name is Jorge on both sides of the river by Jean Medina. Follow along with the book as you listen to Dr. Escamilla read this poem. The library card. Today I went to the library. Mama called it La Libreria. But I know they don't sell books here. My teacher said with a library card you can use them for free. Free books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them, anybody can open them and wander inside their books of choice. So I will let go of my stiff hands. She looked like Miguelito before a spelling test. Big eyes. Shoulders up high underneath a pink shawl. We need a card. Necesitamos una tarjeta, mamá. So I tug mamá to the long wooden desk, shiny like the head of the man who gave us paper for a card. The man made a frown with his mouth after he gave us the paper, like he didn't want us to take the paper, like he didn't want us to take his books. Vámonos, mijo, mamá said. But mamá, we can't go. I need the books for school. Free books? standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them, anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. We hid at a corner table. Mama whispered the answers when I read from the paper. I gave her the pen. She twisted her around and around till she found the best way to fit her in her hand. Then she drew her name. The paper and I jumped up from the table and ran to the shiny head man. Boy, he said too loud and too slow, like talking to Abuelita. You can't sign this paper. I told him my mom signed it. Mamá, ¿verdad que la firmó usted? She shook her head. Sí. But the man left at Mamá's bent name, Mamá's little girl signature. Then his frown surrounded Mamá and me. Vámonos, Mamá. I don't want these books. Free books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. Anybody but Mama and me. Okay, so um, a couple things that just came up in the chat. Obviously, you would. This is this was targeted for fourth grade. So um, you, for younger kids, you'd make the text bigger, um, which is easy to do on a Google Doc. You'd have a cursor um, with each word, right, uh, tracking each word. Um, I, I changed this one a little bit for fourth grade uh, to not track every single word, but using the book to still help kids. So again, not perfect, not perfect. And we're in a virtual world, it's not gonna be perfect, but um, if you have a doc cam or something like that and you see something that would be better for your kids, you'd obviously wanna do it that way. So we've done the teacher read. Um, then what we would go to is the echo read. So this is where I read and then you read after me. Um, let me, I have a different screen here. Oops. Hold on just a sec. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, can you see that? All right, so what I did here is um, 
we're going, you're to signify when you are reading and when I'm reading, you're going to listen to Manuel read a chunk, and then you're going to read with me. Okay, so everyone's should be muted. But I should, as a teacher, you're going to want to ask kids to at least see their fit, their mouths move, right? So we can't ensure that everyone is, but you could have a guest reader, you could randomly unmute. These are some things you can do for accountability. But for now, we're going to have everyone muted and you're going to follow along with me. So I want you actually reading out loud in your houses if you're able um, with the echo read. So you're reading with me. You are going to read along with me. The library card. The library. I'm sorry, this um, recording isn't awesome, but we'll just have to do our best with it for now. All right. Card. Today I went to the library. So everybody. Today, Today I, I went, went to, to the, the library. library. Mama called it la librería. Mama, Mama called it la librería. But I know they don't sell books here. But I, but I know, know they, they don't, don't sell books here. My teacher said with a library card you can use them for free. My, My teacher, teacher said, with a library card, you, you can, can use them, them for free. Free books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Free books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. But I wouldn't let go of my stiff hand. Mama wouldn't let go of my stiff hand. She looked like Miguelito before a spelling test. She, she looked like Miguelito before a spelling test. test. Big eyes, her shoulders up high, underneath her blue shawl. Big, Big eyes, her, her shoulders, shoulders up high, high underneath, underneath her blue, blue shawl. We need a card. Necesitamos una tarjeta, mama. We, we need a card. Necesitamos una tarjeta, mama. We took mama to the long wooden desk, shiny like the head of the men who gave us paper. I tugged, I tugged Mama, Mama to, to the, the long wooden desk, desk, shiny like the head of the man who gave us paper for a card. The man made a frown with his mouth after he gave us the paper. The, the man, man made a frown, frown with his mouth, his mouth after he gave us the paper. Like he didn't want us to take the paper. Like he didn't want us to take his books. Like, like he, he didn't want us to take the paper. Like he didn't want us to take the books. Vámonos, mijo, Mama said. Vámonos, mijo, Mama said. But Mama, but Mama, we, we can't, can't go. I need the books for school. Three books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Three books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. We hid at a corner table. We hid at a corner table. Mama whispered the answers. Mama, Mama whispered, whispered the, the answers, answers when I read, read from the paper. paper. I, I gave, gave her the pen. She twisted her around and around till she found the best way to fit her in her hand. She twisted it around and around till she found the best way to fit it in her hand. Then she drew her name. Then she drew her name. The paper and I jumped up from the table and ran to the shiny head man. The paper, paper and I jumped up from the table and ran, ran to the shiny head man. Boy, Boy, he, he said, said, too loud and, and too, too slow. slow. Like talking to abuelita. Like talking, talking to abuelita. You can't sign this paper. We can't, can't sign, sign this paper. I told him my mom signed it. Mama, ¿verdad que la firmó usted? I told him my mom signed it. Mama, ¿verdad que la firmó usted? She shook her head, sí. She shook her head, sí. But the man laughed at Mama's bent name, Mama's little girl's signature. Then his frown surrounded Mama and me. Then his frown surrounded Mama and me. Vámonos, Mama. I don't want these books. Vámonos, Mama. I don't want these books. Three books, Sorry. standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Three books, standing still, straight and tall, so anybody can grab them. Anybody, Anybody can open them and wander inside their halls of dreams. Anybody but Mama and me. 
anybody but mama and me. Okay. I know that wasn't perfect, but you get the feel for it at least. Um, Dina, was there anything that came up? Um, um, I've been resp responding a little bit in the chat, but there was some questions about accountability and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a little bit. But uh, we also want to recognize that you may not be able to hold students accountable in the same ways that you would in a classroom setting. And that's just the nature of virtual learning. Um, but we'll talk about some ways that you can at least yeah. try to ensure some uh, accountability. Just remember, kids are reading the same text a total of 10 times over the week. So even if they're not all reading it perfectly, they are going to have multiple opportunities to interact with it. So they will they will see it and they will hear it, even if it's not perfect. OK, so um, we're going to do choral. And I'm only going to play part of it because we've already done this before. Um, and because of time, um, we don't have a lot of time. But we're just going to do a little bit of the choral. So we're all reading together. The, the library, library card. card. Today, Today I, I went to the, the library. library. Mama, Mama called, called it La Libreria, libreria. But, but I know, I know they, they don't sell books here. here. My, My teacher, teacher said with the library, library card, you can use them, them for free. Free books, standing, standing still, straight and tall, tall so, so anybody, anybody can grab them, anybody, anybody can open them, them and wander inside, inside their halls of dreams. dreams. Okay, I'm gonna stop it there just for time's sake. Um, but you get the feel. So we would do it all together. So this is very scaffolded and supported for kids to be reading this over and over again. Okay. All right. So we've done echo. We did, or we did teacher read, echo, choral, and now the partner read. So what we would do is we'd have partners read the text. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Dina? Do we have time to do this? What are, where are we at here? Um, we need to finish. Uh, let's keep let's... going. Yeah. Is that okay? Do you yeah, all, are you all so. okay with that? I think you want to get to more of the strategies than to actually do it. So um, what we would do now is we would partner read. Each of you with your partner would read a stanza. So I'd read a stanza, you'd read a stanza. And I've already had so much support, but the echo and choral um, that now I'm able to do it with um, a partner. Just mute. Okay, there we go. So um, we're going to keep going then because what comes after that? Oracy. So we want kids doing oracy. And Dean, I'll, I'll let you do this piece. Yeah. So um, again, when we're thinking about oracy, we're thinking about the vocabulary, the language structures, and the dialogue. So those three pieces are what we really want to be thinking through. Um, this likely would be uh, maybe one of the first practices with oracy because it's kind of, it, it's beyond comprehension a little bit, but it's still really connected to the text and students could access this after just having read it that, you know, those three times on the first day. So when you're thinking about planning oracy, you're always thinking about the literacy objectives, right? What are students needing to know and learn um, and be able, how can they demonstrate that through talk and through writing, right? So um, in this situation, students will have been working on uh, vocabulary with prefixes. So we're thinking about for this particular situation, thinking about fair and unfair and just and unjust. Um, this would likely be situated in a larger discussion of prefixes, but thinking through um, how they might use those vocabulary words to express meaning. And then in this uh, oracy practice today, we're going to be thinking about the conditional tense, which can be really complicated for all of us, but particularly for emergent bilinguals, right? So thinking through if I were, I would, and then thinking also about different uses of should, would, and could, and talking explicitly about the different connotations of those um, language uses, right? So um, person A, for example, would say, what could the librarian have done to be more just to Jorge and his mama? And then person B would respond, the librarian could have, and then they would have an example, right? That person would also continue the conversation. So they would say, what do you think the librarian could have done to be more just? Then person A would be responsible for responding, the librarian could have, with another idea of what the librarian could have done, right? So here we see that the first child is initiating the conversation, the second student is responding and then continuing the conversation. So that's where we see the dialogue happen. It's not just, Person A answers the question, person B answers the end, right? Which is what we often see where it's just completing a sentence sense. We want to extend that language and have them talk. So um, you would have, that could be an example that you would all practice together. Another example 
is if you are Jorge, would you go back to the library? So this is kind of thinking beyond what would you do, right? Connecting it to the interpersonal and thinking through students connecting themselves to the text and to the situation. If I were Jorge, I would or would not go back to the library because, right? And we know with Common Core, the defining and defending your thinking and your reasoning is always super important in connection to the text, right? What about you? If you were Jorge, would you go back to the library? And so we see here that piece of what about you? That's a dialogue extension and that's authentic conversation in English, right? Students may not know that that's how you extend talk, but we want to teach that language structure. What about you? What If you were Jorge, would you go back to the library? And that person's response, if I were Jorge, I would or would not go back to the library. And then they explain why. And note that these answers are not just yes or no. So this really allows yes. students to do some more critical thinking. And this is where we put in our social justice pieces too. Notice the text that we're using. Notice the questions we're asking. We, um, we've heard the call to action. We need to be doing more social justice in our classroom. So this is a perfect area um, where you can do that. And on that note, because a lot of times your curricular resources may not have a lot of Lara components, some of them might, but if they don't and you're writing these yourselves, we highly encourage you to choose those critical texts um, that are culturally irrelevant because they may not be in the existing curriculum. So this is a great opportunity that if you're doing that additional work of writing a curricular piece that you really think critically about what text you're including. Um, and you'll see that we often do that thinking through how do we engage students in those social justice aspects. Oops. All right. So we're gonna put you in breakout rooms just for a few minutes to practice this. Um, and then if you're finished, you can ask if you were Jorge, would you go back to the library? We're just gonna practice the really quick um, answer to the question. So Jody's put it in the chat for us um, and I will put you in breakout rooms. I'm gonna put you in groups of three just in case somebody can't join. And, and um, before you do that, Dina, I just wanna yeah. remind people, um, I don't have it up right now, but the bit.ly that we I'll sent, remember chat, you yeah. have the access to this poem. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you have access to this poem. So if you wanna go look at it again, you have access to it, um, but these questions you, you should be able to answer without too much uh, text digging. And students it. should be able to answer it too, right? Cause they've now heard the text four times cause you read it once and then they've done the echo of Coral and partner read. So we're imagining that we're the students we want you to practice this um, or see. I'm gonna put you in groups of three just in case someone can't join you. That way you can be person A and person B. If you have three people, just go through it. Um, we trust you as adults to be able to figure out how to do that. Just give you a few minutes here. Everyone should be able to see these in the chat. We might need to do some reshuffling too if some of you are by yourselves. Okay. You should be invited to a room and we'll come back in three minutes. If you're unable to get to a chat right now, we understand. You can just hang out with us in the main room. I'm trying to think. see if anyone's alone. Let's see if I can see. I can't see them. You're the only one who can see I can them see them. I see one person might be alone. Let's see if I can move them. Move to you. Oh, Yvonne is also moved. Let's see. Okay. Um. Yeah, I don't think it's going to take them too long to do this. But. No, I don't think so. I'm, I'm just Sorry, shuffling everyone. I, don't, I, I didn't think know everyone's I, good. Okay. I didn't know if we should do, um, I wanted to do partner, but I was feeling like their time was getting too long. Is yeah, I think they have more uh, questions than anything. So I think like about the actual implementation of online. So I think it'll yeah. be good to have a little more time for discussion. Yeah. And it's a hard, it's hard because we had a lot of people without the background. So yeah. it's the only thing, but hopefully, hopefully they still comprehended enough to be able to answer the questions. 
that was a game time decision. And of course, the I think I'm fine. I think it's fine. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Garcia. Oh, you have any questions for us? Oh, okay. It says everyone's assigned, so I don't. Okay, great. <laughs> if you need help at all, if you can't get in a breakout, let us know. We're happy to put you in one. I have some problems with my microphone. Okay, no worries. Don't, no worries, Maribel. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat for us. <laughs> Should I say one more minute? Yeah, I don't think we need much longer. Because it'll close, it'll still <coughs> have a whole minute to close. Oh, that's right. You might want to close them. Close now. it now. Yeah. Okay. Those of you coming back, did you have a chance to answer? Um, not really, we couldn't hear each other. Oh. oh. So I don't know what happened. Oh, at, at all? <laughs> at all. At all. Well, I think she could hear me, but I couldn't hear oh, her. Okay, uh -oh. all right. Hopefully that was uh, not everyone's <laughs> situation. <laughs> That's the and one I'm hard thing about WOVA, right? Yeah, oh, and I'm yeah. the camera, and I've got my little guy next to me, and he still has his oh. PJs. So. <laughs> no worries, no worries. What about that, the rest of you? Were you able to get in? Were you able to hear each other? Miss Maria, Miss Carrillo, Parraga, were you able to hear your partner in the chat in the breakout? No, huh? Okay. Oh, you were able to. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> I was worried it was a problem with everyone. Okay. Okay. How much longer till they close, Dina? You know? They should be coming. They should be back. Okay. All right. We were brought, we were sent back. <laughs> okay. Did you have time, Lucinda? Yes. I, okay, I, okay. I was with Lisette Morena. Oh, oh great. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Well, we might have had some issues with some of you had some issues in the breakouts and that's just the unfortunate piece of PD and weird, you know, weird <laughs> WOVA and all of that, but um, hopefully you got at least the idea. Um, great. Oh, and thank you, Sally. The opposite. Read Thomas and the Tomas and the library lady. Yes. So, oh, so oh. Sally, that would be a great opportunity to maybe do this one in English and then that one in Spanish, right? And you're building those connections across. So that makes a lot, a lot, a lot easier if your texts are related in some way. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, those ideas are great too. And I just, this, this was not originally written in Spanish, but I just did one for Texas for uh, El Leon in, in La Biblioteca. If you've ever read the, the Lion in the Library, that's a pretty fun one too. Um, all right, so we're gonna keep moving along here. So you got an idea, right? You got an idea of what it would be like. It wasn't perfect, but you got a feel. You've gotten the feel for the whole strategy, um, but let's give you a few more ideas here. Um, so if you do not have breakout rooms, some districts, you can't go to breakout rooms, your kids, you can't rely on them in breakout rooms. If you just cannot do that, um, you can do the traditional round robin oracy, right? So um, the wheel of the wheel of names is online, um, popsicle sticks, etc. And this is how I would do it. You could do it differently. But if I select Azul from my popsicle sticks, I would ask Azul the question. Azul, if you were Jorge, would you go back to the library? And Azul would answer, yes, if I were Jorge, I'd go back to the library because blank. Then I'd pull another stick, I pull Antonio and Azul now, because we want to make sure students are having opportunities to ask as well as answer. Azul asks Antonio, Antonio, if you were Jorge, would you go back to the library? Antonio answers, no, blah, blah, blah. Then I select, select Ronaldo, Antonio asks Ronaldo. So that's how you can do it kind of with just, if you have limited resources or a small group that can work as well, but make sure you're getting your kids to, to ask, not just answer. So try to emulate a dialogue as much as possible. Or a C on Padlet. Padlet does have a recording feature. Um, so we, we like that one. Um, you can write the question and the sentence frame for their answer. Um, you can have students also, you could, so, I'll, I'll show you it on Padlet, but they can choose this voice to do the voice response. If you have older kids and want to add the um, piece of accountability, they could also write their answer after they record it 
And then students can, in only in written fashion on Padlet, they can respond to others' re, um, responses. So let me show you Padlet. All right, so here's our Padlet. Let me just show you. So the question is, what could the library of Pen librarian have done to be more just to Jorge and his mom? And here's my my audio recorded answer. Maybe if it will play. To be more just, I think the librarian could have greeted Jorge and his mom with a smile, and then he could have found a librarian who did speak Spanish to help them. What do you think? What could the librarian have done to be more just to Jorge and his mom? So I at least have the frames up there for them. And then you can assign kids to reply in written format. So this was um, the anonymous Dina. Uh, I agree with you, Jody. To be more just, I think the librarian could have been kind and tried to help Jorge and his mom. Instead of judging the, pap the paperwork, he could have accepted it and given Jorge his library card. These are our adult answers, but you get the feel for how that is. So you just go to this plus button right there. Um, and then in this more, you have the option to voice record, okay, on Padlet. All right, so that's Padlet. Oracy on Flipgrid. We love Oracy on Flipgrid. It's probably the best we've found as far as um, an app. Students record their answers um, and then they can respond with video. So not just in writing um, and you can post the structures for the students. The kids like it because you can do fun filters and take selfies. And so we, you know, they love that. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, okay, here it is. All right, so these are our responses. So I think mine starts, right, Dina? All right. Yeah, yeah. yours has my response on it. Okay, so here's my response on flip on. Of course, it's thinking really hard. There we go. If I were in Jorge's shoes, I would get my friends together and we'd make signs that said, boycott, this library is racist. And we'd stand outside the library so people wouldn't go there. And so the library would change their ways. What about you? What would you do if you were in Jorge's shoes? Okay, and then Dina has replied here and you can assign kids. If I were in Jorge's shoes, I would tell my school teacher about the incident and I would ask her for help. And I would take her back to the library and help have her help me get a library card and then have her help me report the racist incident. What about you? What would you do okay. if you were in Jorge's shoes? You can keep going like that. So um, Flipgrid is is really nice because you have that video option for both. Okay. Um, oops. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. If I were in Jorge's shoes. Okay. We know. We know what you would do, Jody. All right. So next. Okay. So those are some a couple ideas for the Oracy. More ideas for practicing repeated readings. Um, seesaw. Seesaw is it. So one of the one of the challenges I've found is tracking is to do the tracking online. Um, I have really struggled with that. So I did. I showed you the custom cursor. Um, I do like seesaw because you can highlight. So let me show you an example. Oops, this was seesaw. Um, sorry, I thought this was already up. There we go. Okay, so I was able then to highlight in two different colors, depending on when I wanted kids to repeat. So remember, these are, this is an idea for a repeated readings using a different- Now we're going to do what I read, and you will see a purple highlighter when it is your okay. turn to read. The library card, and then they would read now. The, the library, library card. card. Today, I went to the library. Today I went. Oops, today today I, I went, went to the, the library. library. Okay, so that I think the highlighting Mama is helpful. Called it la libreria for the I tracking. I know they don't sell books here. Mama called it la libreria, but I know they don't sell books here. Okay, so that's an option as well for Seesaw. Go ahead, Dina. I just also want to chime in that some of you were talking about accountability, or maybe some of your students not being able to to read so much as just repeat. And this is an issue we have in in face to face with Lada Lara too, that some students, you'll see them mouthing, but they're not reading or they whisper. And so that's kind of gonna happen across the board, but at the very least they're hearing this repeated reading 
and seeing it match to text, right? So we know on some level that is some input learning. So I would say don't let the, the anxiety around accountability stop you from trying it out. Just to know, I try to do the whole thing on Seesaw. And so re just remember the time limit. So Seesaw only has a 15 minute max. So if you're doing a repeated reading that's too long, um, you won't be able to get it all in on Seesaw. So just a word to the wise, before you start recording something, time it. <laughs> so you don't waste your time trying to get it all into one. I would also right. encourage you to think about not having a repeated reading that takes more than 15 minutes, particularly in a virtual. All right, as far as um, the independent read here, you could also use Flipgrid for the independent read, so, or the partner read, right? So, um, of course, it is so slow. I'm sorry, everyone. But you, you might not be able to do partner read like we just did in our breakout. So you might need to assign it. So you could make this a five-day uh, lesson plan template and on the last day or the last two days, assign kids to do this on um, Flipgrid. So I had this up, but of course. All right, so you can have kids. You can post it on there, which is nice. You, you saw that. And then the kids would actually read it. And then they can also put their filters and stuff, which they love to do. So the library card. So I'm just reading it. Today I went to the library. Mama called it la librería. Okay. But so I know they don't it, it's here. a way for them My teacher said to be a library card. Okay. So you get the idea, but um, that's a possibility as well for doing um, independent or partner read on Flipgrid. And then if I read it, then Dina could reply to me and then she could read it as well. Okay. And this would likely be something you would do one time um, yeah. in the, the week, you know, maybe on the, the Friday where you're, the students have had lots of opportunities to hear and read it, and then they could record themselves reading it fluently on their own. If really technology is an issue, they could read it also to a housemate. Um, and maybe even if they're able, take a selfie of themselves doing that um, for a little accountability, but they could read to a pet or a family member, sibling, a stuffed animal. Um, so that's a possibility as well. It's just harder with the accountability. Okay, so we gave you lots of ideas and I'm sure your minds have been spinning with your own platforms, your own kids. Um, we would love for you to share right now some other ideas you have for making a lot of lot of and or a C successful online. Um, or which of the strategies shared today do you plan on trying or any questions we can answer right now as well. Please don't be shy, share out loud. If you yeah, like. and you can unmute and unmic. I mean, this really, this is for teachers. You all have been doing this, like we said, so. Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, so, and I've written a little bit in there. I've seen a lot of responses from you, Dina, so thank you. But um, I have middle school students, very difficult to get them to speak and very difficult to hold them accountable. And now we're moving to hybrid where we literally have in every single class we teach hybrid and in-person students at the same time, which is a lot to manage. So because of that, we started using a platform called Desmos, which used to only be used for math, but it's really moving into the language world because it's, it performs at a very, very, very high speed, um, better than Pear Deck, better than Nearpod in terms of quickly checking to see if students are engaged in the, whatever the tasks are. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how to incorporate like a Flipgrid or something like that into it, but then also see that students have done it. I mean, that's the, that's the hardest part is to actually see, because students will fake it all the time and say, oh yeah, I, I got this done and it's not done. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I hate to say that, but that's right. true. Oh, <laughs> Middle okay. schoolers will, especially. And they don't turn on their cameras. Um, and we've had an equity issue about not forcing them to turn on their yeah. cameras. Yeah. Um, and so we, we don't want to force it. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I could, but I can't, you know. Would I, it be possible yes. to, um, since it sounds like you have about half and half or some in line, could you do the, the hybrid um, one student reading to another on the computer and you could kind of circulate? Yeah, in breakout rooms? Yeah. I potentially, I, I could potentially do that. Um, 
and I probably have to do it the way you guys did, maybe do it in groups of three or even four, because sometimes, unfortunately, there's almost always somebody's mic who isn't working yeah. uh, remotely or things that we can't problem solve, but maybe that's a way to do it. I don't have a way, and I'll have to research it. We do have Zoom. I don't think I have a way for students to record themselves. Um, oh, I don't think. It, maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe, so it, maybe you do it that way one day and then you ask them just once, you know, so you don't have to, because I, I get having to manage like that everyone's doing it. Maybe just once in the week, you have them record themselves on Flipgrid, reading it yeah. independently, just so that you are, you know, that you know that they have the fluency with the text. They could also do it just on voice memo on their phones and send it to you individually if they're shy about other kids seeing it. Um, oh, that's an interesting thought. So voice memo or um, there's other recording apps on there um, that you could use. I have, I'll, I'll look one up, uh, Audio Note. Audio Note is one that um, is a free version, but I don't know. It depends what your, your, what your district will let you do too. Also, um, um, we would love any feedback from you because we haven't really used this strategy much in the middle school. So um, Jody has a little expertise in middle school, but... Uh, it would be interesting to hear back how that's going. Well, I'm trying to do a, an informational, uh, informative unit on um, climate change. So it's challenging. We just got done reading our first initial text where basically I'm just making each individual student read aloud and take turns. And I know that's not the most strategic, but that's the way I can hold them accountable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like this better. So I am going to try it. I'll, awesome. I will, I'll give you feedback. Yeah, report back. <laughs> we do have a colleague who've used it and um, DLENM has an article about it you, you, being used in middle school. So you could um, email me and I can get that to you as well. Okay, do you have your email posted somewhere and all of yes, this stuff? I do, I do at the end, um, which I can show you. Other ideas? Okay. Or just put in the chat. Yeah. I'll put it in oh yeah that would work <laughs> all these things yeah i just put in the chat um to choose one this can feel really overwhelming we wanted to show you a lot of ideas just use one thing that you're comfortable with and see how you can get it to use it and if i would choose one i would choose flipgrid yeah, i have a question mm -hmm. uh, about like in first grade like singing songs and type in that song, but don't you think that is just memory and not reading? What do you think about it? Yeah, typically when we do the tracking, we have we we have you do or the echo reads, we have you do chunks that are long enough to where students can't just sit back and like listen and repeat, right? Because they'll just kind of listen to you and not really attend to the text. So typically we have you do chunks that are just long enough to where they have to be looking at the text in order to be um, tracking and decoding instead of just listening to you. Um, so that's the one thing that we would suggest for, for that. And Lucinda too, you're on here. You please feel free to jump in as well. But yeah, that's, that's typically what we suggest for that. I was also thinking maybe you, in addition to showing the text um, on the screen, you could send in advance the text to the parents. Yes. Um, those who are able to pull it up and print it out before the lesson, uh, they can do it. It wouldn't be required of everyone, but it would just be one other way which we could have those texts in front yes. of its eyes in a way that is easier for them than um, only on the screen. <laughs> exactly, and we, we do suggest, so it's only really in one language per unit. So you should hopefully be able to plan one far enough in advance where you could get it maybe sent home in a hard copy, but that's a good point, Lucindo. Or take something that's in a book they already have um, yep. to, to use. Yeah, in DPS, we have been recommending that they use the short share readings or benchmark in K2 because yeah. they're short and they should have resources for students Great. to have in their hands, like Lucinda said, or you can upload them to CISO. We are finding that online kids um, obviously have a shorter attention span. So you might need to then take e those texts that are already short and just do a chunk as long as there's still meaning and comprehension that yeah. they can glean from it. There, there was right. a question before about chunking the text or how much text to use and maybe just a reminder that you're going to be reading it three times at least with them and you want to keep it to um, 10 minutes the reading maybe so then there is also time for oracy and you don't over you don't take over your whole 
um, reading block. Um, exactly. So depending on the age, the grade, the uh, reading levels, just chunk the text that you use such that you spend about 10 minutes um, do, doing the repeated readings. And that's why, you know, poems are great for, for fiction and in nonfiction, you can find kind of those little blurbs like encyclopedia entries, those sorts of things can be really helpful. I wanted to thank Jody and Dina and thank you everybody for attending the session. We really appreciate everybody's engagement and Jody, Dina, this was wonderful. Thank you for so many Thanks great everyone. ideas and resources. Please write us if you have questions and if you want to try it out, we'd love for you to send us pictures. Yes. Yeah, see you at the next session. Dina, if you don't mind just ending the session for everyone. Yes. Somebody else will need the room. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Jody. You. Thank you. Great. Take care, everyone. I think I have to end now because somebody yep. else is coming. So yep. thank you. Thank you.